Hey, great day to you all. I hope you guys all woke up super grateful to be alive again another day in this experience. Because today you're a brand new person. Yeah. Yesterday no longer exists. The only place it does is in your own memory of it. <laughs> so I guess you guys all seen that shit yesterday. Me having a rough time. Well, guess what? We're all human and we're allowed to do that. Okay. Doesn't change who we are. Not at all. But, you know, it's all about evolving, learning, and growing. Okay? And when you make a lot of serious changes in your life, it's really hard to accept what you have accepted all your life when you know it hasn't been helpful to you. Okay? So, you know... Factually, I don't care what title people hold in my life. I'm grateful for every single experience I've ever lived. Today I sit here as a brand new person with zero regrets to my life. I don't even regret yesterday. Yesterday fueled so much change. It fueled so much great change, feeling like that. Sometimes you just got to let yourself feel like that. Well, things that I have been avoiding to feel, I couldn't avoid anymore yesterday. Okay. And all my life, I have been so consumed with making sure that everything and everybody is okay around me that it has been very difficult to learn and to grow how to do it for me alone. Okay? Because when you construct your life and your way to be always filled with what everybody else has wanted for you, it's really hard and disrupting for everybody when you decide to finally say, look, that may be how I've been living all my life, and maybe that's what I've accepted for myself from you because I've had no choice. But now having the choice, I no longer want to accept that for myself. Well, it ruffles feathers within your own self and it ruffles feathers with the people that you've accepted it from all your life. It's as simple as that. Biggie, I hear you scratching, Mama. You gotta stop. Thank you. No, but for real. And... You know what? Factually speaking, you know, yesterday I got upset because I felt like I wasn't being heard. And it was really, really upsetting to me with somebody that's supposed to be the closest person to me. But, you know, in all reality, I've never been able to find that in that person. So what would change now? You see, my learning yesterday... And, you know, I preach it. I tell people that all the time. But getting caught in that situation when, like, I'm expressing down to my core what is going on with me. And this individual refuses to see me as a person. So it was very overwhelming for me. Okay? So people may have accepted certain things and maybe played it small and chose commonplace thinking and chose to just sit back. Well, that's not me. That really isn't me. I'm not one to sit back and be put in anybody's box. I know what I bring. So 
it was really hard for me to try and get through to my own mother. And I'm still met by the same blocks that I've had from this person all my life. Yeah, she's my mom. I love her to death. But she has expected me to play small, even telling me not to do the lives. Oh, that, oh, it's okay when you're out there reading your books, but it's not okay when you're out there doing the lives. You're too animated. You're, you're too this, you're too that. But I've always been too something for my own mother. So that's what pushed me over the edge yesterday. Because really, I've had enough. I've had enough. And I've been playing small to appease my mother all my life. Well, I've always been too much for my own mother. So, that causes a lot of problems in your life. It really does. And coming out of that horror story of an attempt to love somebody, Jesus. I've been sitting here for three months with not even a stove in my house. But my mother wants to shove a toaster oven in my face instead of evolving and pushing me to... Listen, I'm picking up the pieces from having a heart attack, living in situations that I don't even want to be living. So yesterday it was very difficult. Because I know what I can do. And I also know that what I have to live is temporary. But... On top of what I'm living, I cannot accept from another individual, no matter who it is, for them to try to make me play small. I have never been small. The things that I do are out of this world. So how am I supposed to play small and accept suffering? Who would want that for, for themselves? Never mind taking that a, advice from, you know, come on. Nah, that's not who I am. I really am not that person. And I am so tired of playing small in my life. For the comfort of others. And that's what I've done. Why? Well, staying distracted by everything and everybody who needs it. Well, nah, you get to get sometimes just sick and tired. And it doesn't matter what it is you're living. Doesn't matter. Hey, shit, like, I can't believe I even survived the past three years. But I have, only to make me a better person. So you know what? When I see that life is just making people not right and they sit and make excuses for it instead of self-accountability, you know, everybody expects everybody else to change but doesn't want to do that on their own part. And that's really fucked up. It's fucked up. Like, I've made all of the changes that one would assume would deem valid for your own family to look at you different. But because it seems like I'm the only one that has changed, well, that's why sometimes you just have to, yeah, remove the titles, like I preach. Remove the titles. Because if it wasn't the title of what they carried, they would have no relevance in my life being the individuals that they choose to be. Because of who I am. You know what? And I'm tired of hearing how strong I am. I fucking know how strong I am. That's the last thing somebody should be having to tell me is how strong I am. 
because I know that. So, it's just, you know, you got to let yourself sometimes get to the point that I was at yesterday to feel the biggest change. And what did it fuel inside of me? Well, guess what? I have been sitting in this fucking city to stay close to take care of somebody who can't even validate what I'm saying to them. Well, what does that do for me? Well, I no longer have a reason to stay in this city. Straight up. So, time for me to venture out in my life and do me for the first time in my life because I know I can make anything happen. So I'm ready to do just that. And being who I am, I've never in my life had somebody to say, oh, come, <laughs> Toby, come here. Let's, I'll take you by the hand. No, I've been the one. So, There's nothing that can stop me because everything that I've made possible for absolutely every single person attached to me who left me in the dust, hey, catch you in another lifetime because I think it's time for me to spread my wings and fly. and. Sometimes you got to get to the point that you get to to make the biggest pivotal changes in your life. There is nothing for me here in this city. I don't even know why I'm here. Honestly, there's nothing here for me. I'm here alone. I'm alone 24-7. 24-7. All the time. Yesterday, a friend... <laughs> I was... Nanny duties yesterday again. Went to see my granddaughters and my daughter. But you know something? They're not even in this city. I got to drive an hour to go see them. <laughs> so what am I doing here? I have no clue. Trying to stay and build something in a mess that created me to not get it right. Well, I've gotten it right. I've shed too much skin to stay where the damage and the trauma and the shit is. Because that's all it is here. There's nothing good around me here. No. I don't belong here. I never have. And I've been sticking around here to make sure others are fine. Well, others are fine. Even my kids, they're grown adults. <laughs> The way my daughter put it to me yesterday is, Mom, it doesn't matter, matter what is said. You, all my life, have been a loving, kind individual. She said to me, you know, Mom, you know how many people you've been mother to other than your own children? She says, you don't know how many kids of my age know even today and have told me that you were their life changing factor for them she said it doesn't matter who says what she says trust me the ones who know know and the ones who can't figure it out leave them in that it's got nothing to do with you i was like thanks kiddo great reminder you know what it really is great to have conversations with my grown daughter See, that's where the difference lies, and that's the biggest generational curse that I've broken. Is, you know, people may call it mother wounds and all of this shit, but guess what? Factually is, my mother and her mother don't have a good relationship. And they invalidate each other, and the shit that they do to each other is absolutely disgusting. I'll say it. So I have not only tried to repair their relationship, but I've also tried to repair mine with my mother. Because the reason why it's happening with my mother, the way it does is because of her inability to heal the connection with her mother. Okay, that's a generational curse. Facts. 
Well, guess what? I don't have that problem with my daughter. Not at all. We validate each other as individuals. We speak openly and heartfully. We listen to each other. Okay? The way that my daughter preached back to me yesterday validated that to me. But it also reminded me why I needed to be who I am in all of it and make the correction because there's no way in hell anybody should be that disconnected from their own mother. And this is what threw me over the edge yesterday because the disconnection with my own mother was felt to the hugest magnitude. But I guess that was my clear-cut reminder of why that was a generational curse that needed to be broken because I'm right smack dab in the middle of five generations of women. So when I talk about generational curses and cleaning up the ancestry, you're fucking right. And you think my sister could be dependent on that? Nah. She did, she did. Anyway, let's not get into that. That's a book in itself. But the fact of the matter is, I have done my job cleaning up the generational curses. I have done my job cleaning up the ancestral addiction problems. I have done my job cleaning up the alcoholism. Okay, I have done my job and made concrete connections for all of the generations to come. And here I am stressing my head about what I'm supposed to do right now. Well, the way I see it is, there's a lot of reason as to why I'm not sitting there with a fat bank account anymore. And there's a reason why I'm sitting here feeling what I'm feeling. Like I said, it's going to feel the biggest change of my life. Like my daughter told me yesterday, Mom, you don't have to change and you don't have to do anything. You being you has been the biggest factor and life-changing factor for everybody. So, you got no worries. She reminded me yesterday. Mom, you speak something just like Nana does and it appears. You've never really had to break your back to do anything. You make things happen all the time. I was like, you know, thanks for that, kiddo. You see, this is the connection that should be with any mother and child. Why was it so relevant for me to make sure it was there? Because of the disconnect that I come from. And my mother's a great woman. Don't get me wrong. And I'm not sitting here bashing her because that's the last thing I would do. But I will speak truthfully and honestly about being disconnected from her. I wrote it in my books. Ever since I was born, she's been telling me I'm too much for her. Calm down, slow down, be quiet. Da, da, da. Okay, well, to this day, I'm still too much for her. So much so to the point that uh, I'm too animated in my lives. That's okay to read the books, but... Really? You don't see how many people benefit from the lives? Are you just worried that I'm embarrassing you? Well, I can feel that off of her, too. It's like she doesn't realize who I am. She never took the time to look and figure out who I am. Really. Honestly. And that's the biggest thing. I don't want anything from her except for, you know what, a clear connection, heartfelt. But... All I'm feeling is the clear disconnect. 
it's just a clear reminder of why I had to be who I was. And that's all. Hey, generational cleanup is not a fucking joke. Why? Because I had to free my kids and my grandchildren of that. And you know, that's why I tell everybody, if you don't do the fucking work, guess what? Your kids are going to be left to do it. And it's not fair. It's not fair. You have to take that on for yourself. Well, guys, I encourage you all to don't let anything or anybody stop you from doing you. Now's the time. I know we've all been conditioned to think we need certain things and do certain things according to others. Well, I just entered my 50th year of life. Well, I'm going to say it loud and proud before I'm 50. Next year? <laughs> Fuck shit's going to change. Oh, of the highest magnitude. Of the highest magnitude. Because, you know what? This suffering, unnecessarily, because I have been the big-hearted person that I am, is cool. It's over. It's like... Up until yesterday's gone. Okay? So that's what I want you guys to see too. Hey, guess what? Everything up until yesterday is gone. Today you're a brand new person. So what are you going to choose for yourself today? Because I know for me, I choose today is going to be one of the greatest days of my life. Why? Because I'm going to sit here and decide where I'm going to pack up and go to. I'm going to do it. I'm going to pick a random spot and I'm going to up and go. Yeah, by spring. I'm going to give myself from now until, let's say, whatever, spring here. As soon as the snow's gone, so is Toby. That's it. I'm giving myself, like, I, you know what? Fuck trying to rebuild the company now and trying to do all of that shit. You know what? I'll figure that out where I, when I get to where I'm going because that's just who I am. I sprinkle magic everywhere I go. And I've been building everybody else's business all my life. Hey, I can do my own accounting. I have worked in every industry possible. I have worked in transport. I have worked in the hotel industry. I have worked in the rental car industry. I have worked in time to spring. Yes, time to spread your wings and move the hell out of the city. You know what? I'm going to do it. I decided that. That was my, you know what? I go, I woke up this morning at three o'clock because I've been sleeping a lot. Like, you know what? Fuck it. Nothing to do. Sleep. Because I just need to rest. And I keep being instructed to rest. Because what's coming for me, I won't have time to rest. And I believe it. I believe it. Because you know what? I'm about to... I need to build my empire. And I can't do it here. And I can't do it here being around who I'm around. And I can't play small. I know who I am. And I know what I can have. Because you know what? If I accumulated... Everything that I've handed out in my life, yo, I'd be sitting on fucking trillions right now, eh? Holy shit. So now, you know, it's time. So that's what I'm going to do, Carol. I'm packing it up. But I'm going to give myself a couple of months because what I'm going to do this winter, this is my plan. Go through all of the shit that's still here, which isn't much, because I've lightened my load to the down to almost nothing. So you know what? That just frees me of everything. What move? What I what? What do I have? I have nothing to move. I a couple of bags. What? My dog. Let's go. <laughs> so my plan for the next couple of months is to sit, chill, chill out, chillax. Spread some love and light to the world because that's what I'm instructed to do. He said, I can't quit that job. I said, all right, cool. I'll just keep doing that. But lighten this load down to nothing. 
give my kids what I want them to have because that's, you know what, when I was on the edge of death, that's what I did. I got rid of everything and I made my kids two bins, each a bin of stuff that I, I have been keeping from, oh, from when they were really small. Like I've got my son's first pair of sneakers over there and shit. Like, you know, so I'm going to pack their bins, give it to them because they're both adults. My daughter knows I'm ready to fly, and she's like, yeah, Mom, do what you want. You know we're fine. Come on. You've been living for us all your damn life. You did what you had to do. Now it's time for you to live. Go do it. I was like, ah, you know what? I'm going to do it. <laughs> <laughs> so that'll be my uh, next couple of months. Just going through everything, literally, because I've got a lot of paper legal stuff that I have in, I'm going to go through it all and shred it all and nothing exists anymore, right? Hey, shit, it's gone. I don't have any debt per se. So, you know what? Can I come with you? Hey, if you want to. But I want to, I am, it's, I'm going on a life adventure. I'm going to live the rest of my life out as if it's an adventure every day. Every day. I'm going to get the most out of my life. I have been of service all my life. All my life. Well, now I'm going to be of service to me. <laughs> yeah, I'm ready. I'm ready. Spread my wings and fly. There's so much more out there in the world for me than what I've chosen to stay around. You know? I'm limited in Montreal. Why? Because I don't even like the city. I don't. Every time I come over that Champlain Bridge or every time I'm coming back in the other way, I'm like, Eesh. total, I feel the heaviness. Uh, and then the, the minute I get on the other side of the bridge, it's like, oh, I can breathe again, you know? It's like the whole stress of the city just suffocates me. It makes me feel like, like I got to play small. And no, I can't play small. That's not who I am. I know that. Never been able to play small. And you know, if actually, hey, with my accounting and my knowledge, I can do absolutely anything. Anything. So, I don't need money. I need me. <laughs> because you know what? This is the way I see it, eh? Wherever I go, I will immediately... I will have, by the end of the day, I will have work. I will have a place to be. I will have, that's just because that's who I am. <laughs> so, yeah, I, yeah. So I encourage everybody to do that too, okay? Especially when you can. A lot of people are tied down to responsibilities and stuff. I get it. But fortunately, with everything that I've lived in my life, I have just realized for myself that I have even been staying where I am for all the wrong reasons. All the wrong reasons. So when I sit and tell people not to make excuses for themselves and shit like that, well, guess what? Yesterday, I had to feel what I felt because I was realizing I have been making excuses to literally stay where I am. Actually... Three years ago, before I got into that relationship, I had already planned on moving out of here. I didn't even renew my lease. I was on the verge of moving out of here. And I put all of that on hold to attempt at that relationship stuff. <laughs> hey, but it was, I just realized, okay, it was inexperienced and it taught me a lot. And... I'm good with that. Thank you. Like, that taught me so much. Sounds crazy, but I'm like, you know, that learning was priceless. Like, <laughs> you know? And, hey, I think I'm ready to just go back to the plans I had for myself before I stopped all of that to, again... Convenience another. Fuck, that's what I've been doing all my life. 
No more, no more. I can't convenience another. I got to start conveniencing myself. Shit, I've got so many skills. I, got, I have the computer knowledge. I have the accounting. I have so many different industries of trade knowledge. I talk about that in one of my books. How I became, I allowed companies, big businesses to pay me to learn. That's why after I mastered the job, I quit. And I moved on to something else. Always a better position. I did that for many, many years. Just to gain the experience and the knowledge and the learning and the skills. Fuck, I can walk into any business and be an asset. No matter what it is. I know that. And I'm sitting here playing small. No. Sitting there, you know, going, okay, how am I going to do this coaching get a website back up and everything when I get, like, I don't even have the means to buy a stove right now. You know what I'm saying? Like, and then I'm like, the fuck am I worried about putting a stove in this place for? I gotta go. I'm sick of being here. I'm sick of playing small. Uh, you know what? I'm healed. So what if I had a heart attack? So what if I beat death how many times? I beat death for a reason. No, it's so that I can live. Well, Staying here is what will kill me. Do I want that? No. So why am I even staying here? <laughs> you see my logic of my yesterday's... <sighs> but I'm grateful for Kenneth Bartholomew. You guys should check him out. He does the telekinesis and stuff. Yo, he when he said release it and put fire on that screen, he is energetically... Amazing. And what he threw at me energetically allowed me to let go of everything that I was had bottled up. But you see, energetically, that's what people do for each other when they're on the same vibe. And I have to find that person that is out there in the world that is a, energetically my match now. I'm tired of playing small. So I'm going to go find what's rightfully mine in every fucking sense of the word. <laughs> and I'm not playing small anymore. That's it. So yeah, next couple of, them, couple of months, I'll, I'll, I'm okay with living how I'm living because I've been okay. I can't say I haven't been okay. doesn't matter what I'm living. I am more than okay. I always am. So I'll do it for the next couple of months and then figure out where I'm going because I'm not staying here. Montreal has nothing for me. Absolutely nothing. Nothing. Family? I don't have any family here. They uh, got to genetically connect. Well, yeah, we got the same genetics or whatever. We're lined up physically, but family? There's nothing here for me. There's a, you know, you know how much family I have here that don't even talk to me? Why? Because I'm embarrassing to them because I speak the truth. Well, that's okay. Be embarrassed. But remain that way. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You stay like that. Because when you finally get the chance to see me for who I am, it's going to be too late. Because already it's too late. And they don't get it. But they don't have to, because I do. Generational cleanup is not a joke. It really isn't. And the things that I've had to live to accomplish what I have, I don't need a million bucks right now to feel successful. I woke up this morning, so ha! I win. Simple. That's how I'm feeling today. Yeah. What doesn't kill you, make you makes you stronger in all senses of the word. Well, if death couldn't take me seven times, guess what? Imagine the strength that's going to fuel this change in my life. You guys, you know what? Mark it on your calendars today. What date are we? The 2nd of December? Everybody mark it on your calendars. A year from today. That's all I'm going to say.
I know it's waiting for me. I don't know what face is attached to it, but I know what's waiting for me. But I'll figure that out along the way. And it's going to be quite the adventure to do it. Because you know what? No matter how, how hard my life has been, fuck if I had a good time. I really have had a blast. I really have. I can't even deny that. No matter what I was doing, I did it well. And you know what? Where my biggest gain is? Where what makes me different? Is I don't just have the book knowledge. Yeah. I got the street smarts too. Yep. Of the highest magnitude. I know who I am in the streets. Even if I've been in retirement. <laughs> so you know what? Literally, I'm fine anywhere I go. I don't need to fear anything. Because the knowledge that I walk with, and when you're certified by the Most High to do what you got to do, you got no fear. I just have to follow my soul and it knows the way. So I'm about to uh, figure that out. Because it already knows the way. I just... I have to clean up and pack up and get ready to follow it. <laughs> anyway, guys, have a great day. Really, have a great day. Set that high vibe. Me, I'm going to have an amazing day because I'm about to hop on the computer and figure out where I want to go. Because, hey, <laughs> I am going to do something very drastic and I'm going to take that leap of faith so everybody mark it on your calendar watch where Toby is today so when you look at in at December 2nd in a year from today if we haven't been in contact make sure you find me on that date because it's going to be very much different than how you see me today. Yeah. Because I've already hit that timeline. I know what's waiting for me. So staying here is not what's going to get me that. So I'm about to explore. My day is going to be full of uh, exploration because I would like to actually see what kind of jobs are out there across Canada and see what, because I can do anything right now. So if I need to, I'll find you for sure. Oh yeah, Carol, you'll never, you'll never lose touch. You'll never. And I'm not going to leave until the spring. I'm going to wait until winter's done because being a person that was raised in the country, you got to prepare for seasons, right? So I'm not crazy and I'm not going to go and try to venture out in the middle of winter and uh, no, no, no. Spring. <laughs> I'll by the springtime when I'm ready to leave, I will have a destination with a job waiting for me, a really good job to get me grounded, build some finances and take it from there. But you know how I roll. I know I like to walk on the edge, but guess what? I'm not, uh, ooh, ooh, you know? <laughs> okay, guys, I love you all. Have a great day. I'm going to go and explore what the world has to offer for me because I know my value and I know my worth. And I can't tap into my highest potential being where I am. So I preach it and I preach it and I preach it well. If I want to embody the highest potential of who I am and what I can make possible, I can no longer allow myself to live the way I am. And I have to trust that because I feel it. I know it. This is not something that I'm thinking. This is something that my heart is pushing me and telling me. So I'm going to respect that. And I'm going to do everything in my power to make sure 
that physically everything follows with where my heart is leading me. Even if I'm unsure, it doesn't matter. I know who I am and it will figure itself out because the universe is always working in our favor. So guys, I want you, if you need to, use me as an example. Don't settle for things in your life that don't make you feel good. See, the more I come out here and I preach to you guys and me being in this situation that I'm in, it doesn't feel good for me. And this is why I encourage you guys all to use the discernment in your heart. When something doesn't feel good, you have to change it. You can't settle for it not feeling good. You got to push yourself no matter what. Well, I'm, a, I'm doing that. I'm doing it. I love you all. Have a super great day. Why? Because you matter the most in your experience. So love yourself heart fully. Connect to your heart. Know what's right for you and know what isn't right for you. And the stuff that's... I love you too. And the stuff that's not making your heart feel right, explore it. Explore it. Face it. Be truthful with it. Don't make excuses for it. And don't allow yourself to be stunting your growth because of of the convenience or for the convenience of others. Don't do it. Don't play small. I can't do it. And playing small to me doesn't feel good. So I have to change it. Because my energy is huge. And I have so much to offer this world on such a bigger note. I know that. So, unless I venture out into this world, really heartfully, well, I cannot do what I'm supposed to do fully. And playing it small is not something that I have ever been meant to do. So I no longer can allow that for myself, you know? So, guys... I encourage you all to do the same. Anything that doesn't make you feel right, change it. Because you have the power to do that. You really do. No matter what it is. But you got to really follow your heart. Don't follow your head. Because your head will lead you in circles and will tell you all the things that you really don't want to hear because it wants to keep you in, in your comfort zone. You know, if you ask your brain, what's your next thought? It'll shut up. People say, I can't stop the racing thoughts. Oh, yeah? Yes, you can. <laughs> Tell yourself something and then ask it, what's your next thought? Your brain has no choice but to accept it as a suggestion. So override anything that you're thinking. Stay in your heart. Because my brain, oh, tells me a different story about all of the reasons why I need to stay in Montreal. Well, all of that is a total contradiction to what I'm feeling in my heart. If Montreal has nothing to offer me but headaches and heartaches, well, why would I stay here? My heart is telling me to go. This is why I tell you guys, stay in the right place because your heart, the messages from your heart will be it either feels good or it doesn't. Okay? Your messages from your head <laughs> will we'll do the waltz with you everywhere and anywhere, but your truest heart's desires. So, I encourage you all today. Push past all of that thinking. Push past any setback. Anything you're feeling today is going to fuel you to be a better person 
should you allow it to. And shit sometimes needs to blow the fuck up in your life for it to fall back into place. Well, I had to allow myself to have that blow up yesterday. Because really, honestly, it doesn't feel good to be sitting here living in what I'm living. No. Especially after I made sure that this individual had everything and more leaving here that he had. Yeah. It was all only my stuff that was gone. That's okay. I did the right thing. So I will continue to do what's right. No matter what. Because it frees my conscience. Okay? And it frees my heart. I know what's right. And I know what's wrong. So... <laughs> A lot of people have asked me, you know, Toby, I can't believe you, you know, how did you even accept that for yourself? Because it was all meant to be and because it no longer exists. That's how come. And those life learning lessons were the greatest lessons I could ever acquire. And what did that do for me? It actually benefited me. You know, people don't get it. Yeah, it was hard to live, hard to come out of, hard to come from. But that benefited me in the highest magnitude of oh yeah what I came out of that with listen beat death twice during that eh? <laughs> the force I have today is unlike I've ever had in my life so that made me a better person but to use all that strength now to enjoy the rest of my life. Simple as that. Because that's what I'm about to do. I'm going to embark on an adventure. That. I promised myself. As of yesterday. That I would never again feel the way I did yesterday ever again in my life. Well I stamped that and embedded that into my core so deep. That it's all magic from here on in. I had to feel that. Guys, encourage you, I encourage you all to allow yourself to feel what you're feeling. Use the discernment and guide everything from there. Very capable, amazing beings. We all are. Don't play small for anybody. Don't stop yourself from having what you could have because it pleases somebody else. Don't do that. You know, you want something in life? Stand up and get it. Yeah, because we can have whatever we want. We're creators, very powerful creators. So genuinely, you don't have to stay in anything that doesn't make you feel good, no matter what it is. Well, I'm going to be living proof of that too. <laughs> guys i love you all have a super magical day set that high vibe make some things happen for yourselves and anything you want in life you can have and don't let anybody tell you that you cannot have it because you can i love you all peace <laughs>